So first we're going to begin by reviewing some of the common things about the ball toss controls that we already know. And then we're going to introduce and work on some concepts that may be lesser understood or lesser known that I believe are really going to help you improve your ball toss consistency. So the first concept I would like to cover is about how we hold the ball. And there are really two primary ways that you see high performance players hold the ball when they're tossing it. And the first one that's quite common is what I call the palm up style, where the palm is horizontal and the ball is sitting on the pads of the fingers, which is the last segment of the fingers. Uh, we don't want the ball on the very tips and we certainly don't want it rolling out of the palm, but we have it on the, on the pads of the fingers, all five fingers, are involved and we just hold steady and lift from the shoulder with the palm up. The second technique for placing the ball and holding the ball is what I call the palm side style. And now with the palm side, the palm is actually vertical and the ball is being primarily held by the thumb, the index finger, and the middle finger and we just hold it there and the other fingers can be on or off the ball but I, I think it feels better if they're off. And in this case, what really happens is it isolates the movement from the shoulder, which we'll get into, and it really takes the potential of a wrist flip out, which is a possible problem with a palm up style. So make sure that you experiment with both and find out which one is more consistent for you, which one you prefer the feel of. Once you've established how you want to hold the ball, it's very important that you start your serve holding the ball the same way so you don't have to make adjustments as you enter into the toss. For example, if I'm going into my pre-serve routine and I'm a palm up style, when I reset my hands, my palm is already going to be up so that when my hands separate, I do not have to make any adjustments or excessive movements to start my motion upward to place the ball up. If I hold the ball in an odd way, then I might have to make some kind of a turn or adjustment. Even a minor movement like that will certainly affect your ball placement. And if I'm palm side style, conclude my routine, I reset my hands, my palm is more in a palm side style, so when my hands separate, I really just have a smooth separation with no excessive movements in there. That's very important. The ball placement is influenced by so many subtle factors and this is one of the key ones you really want to focus on. One of the big mistakes that tennis players make, certainly at the recreational level, is we tend to start to serve too fast and we disrupt the, the tempo that will enable us to have consistent control over the ball toss. And if you watch high performance players and professionals, you see them start their serve much more deliberately and slowly than the average recreational player. So when you're starting your serve, I really encourage you to start it with a, a routine that really sets the tempo and the rhythm of your serve. And I get into that in greater detail in my serve course, but what, what I'll show you really what I mean here is that when I go to start my serve, I really feel like when I start my routine that the speed my hands separate right here really dictates the same speed that my hands move here as I toss the ball. So that movement is really established, that tempo is really established in the rhythm of your routine. So if you rush your routine, you're much more likely to in fact rush the start of the serve and therefore disrupt the ball toss. So when you're practicing, make sure that you feel like your routine is establishing and developing the right feel and the right movement to begin your serve. When you enter into the ball toss, it is so important that your body is in a stable position that allows you to raise your tossing arm with control. And if you watch most of the professionals, you will see that, the, that their weight is primarily on the back leg. So it will look something like this. I'll do the routine, they'll rock back, and they'll hold steady during the tossing phase here where the arm is rising to the point of release, the weight just holds on the back foot as a counterbalance to this movement. And it stabilizes the body so that there is no disruption in the ball toss from the body moving. And I, that's universally true almost with every player. There are a few little styled variations among a few of them, but for the most part, you're gonna see that almost all of them are really holding steady during the tossing phase. So how do you practice that? Well, you do your routine. 
my back heel rises when I'm doing my routine and bouncing the ball, and I reset my hands, I put the heel down, and I stay dead still. And I just practice staying dead still through the phase of the arm rising to the point of release. And then I go back and do my routine again. And this time I'm going to go right into it, hold dead still, and there we go. I got the ball toss I wanted. So you can practice that little technique and that will really help you develop stability during the critical tossing phase. The next concept I want to cover is the angle that your tossing arm is extending as you're placing the ball up. And you see quite a few different variations of this. Uh, you know, for example, Roger Federer has his tossing arm really extend parallel to the baseline. So he really gets it out parallel to the baseline. You know, Novak Djokovic tends to have a little bit more towards a 45 degree angle. Okay, and Sasha Zverev, who's you know currently the big guy on tour, young guy, he has a tossing angle that moves right out towards his target. So his tossing arm tends to be tends to be forward. So which one is right? Well, they're all right, and none of them are really wrong. And it's up to you to find the style that works. What are the advantages of having the tossing arm extend out on an angle? Well, it certainly initiates shoulder rotation. So if you were a player that didn't really have much shoulder rotation and you toss the ball forward, that really wouldn't trigger the rotation that you're looking for to ultimately you know, hit, hit the best serves you can possibly play. So I think you're better off having, having a toss that really goes out over a 45 degree angle. That's what I prefer. So that my tossing arm extends right out over my toe. For me, that gives me the shoulder turn that I need, okay? And it also allows me to place the ball so that it doesn't have to arc back it to get back into the, into the, the contact point. So the, the more your tossing arm goes out to the side, the more the ball needs to arc back to get into the contact range, which is a little bit more complicated. So for me, I'd like to toss it a little bit more straight up and be able to identify pretty early on whether my, my ball toss is indeed in the right place. So experiment with that. Uh, but I think that you're going to be somewhere between the 45 degree and the 90 degree angle so that you can really initiate a strong shoulder rotation that then you can use to produce a powerful swing back into the ball. Next up, we're going to focus on the all-important point of release. And I've got a tip here for you that I haven't really heard anyone talk about very much that I think is extremely helpful in getting you to have a consistent ball placement. And that is really what your eyes are doing during the tossing phase. And what I do and what I've observed that most high-performance players do, Roger Federer does it, Novak Djokovic does it, many of the players do it, is that when they enter into their, into their movement, and they complete their routine and they scan the court and they enter into the serve and they start moving, their eyes transfer from the court to the point of release. And the eyes are just waiting there to see the ball enter the point of release. So the body is steady, the eyes are fixated on the point of release right there, and when they see it there, that's where they let it go. And there's the ball toss. And that's really gonna help you. It, um, it's interesting because I've seen so many players over the years not even think about that and some will find themselves tracking the ball which will certainly be disruptive to the control of the ball and others will look up to the sky early and try to find the ball but I, I don't think that either of those really help you so get out and experiment and I think if you zero in on that point of release and wait there with your eyes you're going to find that your point of release becomes much more consistent and that's certainly going to benefit your ball toss accuracy. Next we're going to focus on the actual movement of the arm as it's rising up, releasing the ball, and then ultimately getting into a vertical position. And you know, oftentimes we hear the word smooth associated with this, have a smooth toss. But what does that mean? Well, to me, the word smooth means that the speed of, of movement is progressive and rather than disruptive or quick. So what we want is we want a movement that develops its movement gradually so that there's no abrupt movements in, in the actual movement itself. So what I feel is that, I, of course, I start out slowly, and I feel as I get into the point of release 
the feeling of having my hand and the ball moving at the same speed and then having my hand continue to rise to the vertical position at the same speed as the ball. So that makes the release of the ball and the control of the ball so much better. So, you know, sometimes you see players that toss the ball and they stop. And other times you see that the, the rhythm of the, of the movement is off and the hand actually moves fast too early in the movement and even sometimes too late in the movement. So what we're trying to do is, is develop a movement that is progressive in speed and then it steadies out as it releases the ball and the hand and the ball move it. You want to get the sensation, they move at the exact same speed. So when the ball is released from the hand, the hand continues to move at the same speed into a vertical position. And that will give you the feeling of having a really smooth release that will feel as though the release itself doesn't disrupt the control of the ball. Next up, I want to focus on the height of the ball toss. And there are definitely many theories about ball toss height that have been roaming around tennis for years. And, uh, you know, the, the Vic Braden methodology was one where you tried to place the ball to the, to the contact point. The theory being that the ball actually stayed in the contact range longer because it stopped. And that was a much easier ball to time. And, of course, we see players today like uh, Juan Martin Del Potro who has got a high toss. And you see tosses like Roger Federer, which is a little bit more common, where the ball definitely gets placed above the contact point, but certainly not uh, excessively so. So what is right? What is, a, what is a great reference point for most of us to begin with and develop our skills with? And I'm going to show you a technique that I've used with my students over the years that really helps improve the ball toss height which is so critical because if the height is, is different, it's just as important as the location because it means it's gonna alter or disrupt the rhythm or tempo and timing of your surf. So let me show you this tip. <clears throat> what I, what I love to use is the fence as a guide for ball toss height and control. And in this case, this fence is, is 10 feet high. Most tennis fences are 12 feet, but we can still use this. So, and I'm just about six feet tall. So I'm gonna come up to the, to the fence here and get myself comfortable, comfortably enough close to the fence so that I can toss the ball naturally and comfortably just as I would serve. And yet the ball is gonna, gonna rise adjacent to the fence. So let's take a look and see what we get here. So that was probably 12, maybe 13 feet, maybe two to three feet over the fence, right? That was probably 11 and a half, 12 feet. That was probably 12 feet. Okay. That was nine feet. Did it seem like I had time? Okay. That was nine feet. I had no time. Okay. So I'm really a proponent, and maybe you're figuring this out. I'm a proponent of having a slightly higher ball toss. In fact, my ball toss is 12 feet high. And I know that because I've practiced it diligently adjacent to a 12-foot fence. And I know that it's natural and comfortable. My serve is fluid. I don't have any big hitches in it. Um, and I'm able to time onto the ball quite well. And, you know, at our club here at the Newport Beach Tennis Club in January, we held a Challenger Series tournament this past January. And we had 84 men and women professionals at the tournament, including TFO, Taylor Fritz, uh, and, and quite a few other notables. Uh, Nishikori played in it. Quite a few players played in it. And I, as a task, I took it upon myself to really look at the height of the ball tosses. And I will tell you that in every case, except for one of those 84, the ball toss went to the height or nearly the height and sometimes beyond the height of a 12-foot fence. So uh, at least when you're learning skills and developing movements, you need more time. You need time to feel things, 
You need time to really determine if the ball is in the right location or not. You need time to really learn how to get into the proper balance and trophy position. You need time to learn how to develop a full and natural range of motion and ultimately get to a nice extension on contact. All of those things require, for most tennis players, more time and a slightly higher ball toss. So the takeaway really is get out to the fence, experiment, and go back and forth, do some tosses to the fence, then go up to the baseline and serve, and keep practicing and discovering what style works best for you. So now that you have a lot of information and ideas on how to place the ball, let's zero in on where to place the ball and how to identify a good toss from a poor toss before you enter into your swing. And for me, what I use is my non-dominant hand as a guideline for ball toss accuracy. Specifically, what that means is that when I place the ball up in the air, my left hand continues to rise to balance me, but also show me that that ball was clearly unplayable, okay? So we'll do another one here, see if I can get that ball to come back into my hand. Release point, ah. Perfect. And that is another reason why I like a slightly higher ball toss. So it gives me time to assess whether my ball toss is indeed in the right place, and then I can make my move or not make my move. So that's gonna help you quite a bit to determine where the ball toss, whether indeed the ball toss is in the right place. Now you could say, well, what if your left hand is you know, off to the right somewhere? Well, that wouldn't work. So we have to know where we want to place the toss and then we use our left hand as a guideline for that placement. And if you, if you look carefully at almost every single professional routinely, certainly, certainly the top professionals on the men's side, the ball toss is inside the shoulder, which means it's between the shoulder and the ear. It's right in here. So it's more above me than it's away from me, okay? This is outside the shoulder. This is gonna produce a much weaker type of serve. Even if I were slicing, I can still slice and come through the inside. Because it's in the inside where the shoulder gets to make its rotational action through the ball. Once you get outside the shoulder, that starts to become more and more of a push because you can't get that rotational action. So from this vantage point, the ball toss needs to be more inside the shoulder, maybe between the shoulder and the ear, more above the head, closer to 12 o'clock. From a side view, the ball needs to be slightly in front of you so that you can get into a nice angle on contact, what's powerful on this angle here. I don't want it back here because this is obviously gonna be weaker. As I throw the racket up, it's gonna be weaker there. I want it in front of me slightly. So I've got a slight angle in, okay? If I get out further than this, now I'm going to be weakening the swing. So to conclude, there is a, a place which I call the slot of power on the serve, which is an intersection between the, 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 the two lines, the side and the forward, which you really want to try to identify and find, and then you want to learn how to place the ball to that place, and then use your left hand as a guideline to be sure the ball is within that window of accuracy. And it is in that window of accuracy where you're gonna be able to serve consistently and develop more power, more rhythm, more accuracy, spins, variations, and so forth. So to conclude, the ball toss placement is really the center of the serve because everything around it is going to adapt to it. So the more skilled you become at placing the ball in a consistent location, the less modifications you're gonna to have to make and the more accurate and more powerful you'll become. Good luck with your surf. To learn more about the Performance Plus uh, serve techniques and program, I do have a, have a program available. It's called the Serve Foundation Program, which builds the serve from A to Z. And it is available to all participants and viewers on this, on this program at a 50% discount through November. So I encourage you to take a look at it. If you're looking to build your serve and really get some great concepts and skills from beginning to end, this is a great thing for you to try. And there's no better time because it's now half price. 
So I welcome questions, feedback, ideas, and I appreciate you watching and uh, wish you the best of luck with your tennis game and your serve.